Mr. Griffith is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Chief Manger, I appreciate your candor and willingness to answer questions earlier this year regarding the separation agreement of former Acting Chief of Police Pittman, which resulted in her retirement with full benefits. I think you're transparent, and I appreciate that, and I thank you for that. I think you're one of the good guys, but I'm kind of like a dog with a bone. So, regarding Ms. Pittman's separation agreement, was the United States Capitol Police's General Counsel Thomas DeBias acting as your personal attorney or the attorney for the United States Capitol Police? For the Capitol Police. And are you aware that the United States Capitol Police, Police's General Counsel DeBias in a transcribed interview has attempted to invoke attorney-client privilege, yes or no? Yes. And if yes, did you instruct him to do so? Uh, no. Okay. Notwithstanding the fact that attorney-client privilege does not apply, in, in my opinion, in this case, because this is a legislative branch investigating a legislative branch entity, common law, established practice, and the Congressional Oversight Manual stand for the proposition that there is no attorney-client privilege in such cases. And notwithstanding that this committee or Congress might be the client as opposed to you in your official capacity, if you are in fact the client, would you waive the attorney-client privilege between you and lawyer DeBias? Yes or no? I, I, I trust his judgment on the, on the attorney-client, the use of the attorney-client privilege. Do you understand that... I, I don't think exactly it is your privilege, you but if it is, it's not his privilege, it's your privilege. The lawyer doesn't have that privilege. You do. You. If it is, in fact, your privilege, would you be willing to waive it? I, I would take my uh, attorney's advice. Well, it's a privilege. It belongs to you. It doesn't belong to your attorney. I understand that. So if he's giving you advice on that, that would be a conflict of interest for him. Do you understand that? You would need to get separate counsel for that. I, I, I'm... I deal with, with my general counsel all the time on these issues, and I trusted his advice. All right. I understand you trust his advice, but this is specific between you and he, and therefore he would have a conflict in advising you on this. I suggest you get separate counsel for that. Ms. Gibson, are you familiar with the separation agreement entered into between the United States Capitol Police and former Acting Chief of Police Pittman, yes or no? I am familiar with that. But you were not involved in that discussion, as I, as I understand it, from the the, That's correct. The, the, board, the good chiefs re, has told us that before. Right. The board was not aware of that agreement until the testimony before this committee. Okay. And um, have you all as a board discussed this separation agreement after the fact? Have you all had discussions regarding this agreement and how it came about? We have. And have you had those discussions with uh, attorney uh, DeBias? I don't recall Mr. DeBias being part of He was not privy to those discussions? No. Was Chief Manger privy to those discussions? Yes. I mean, we discussed this at, uh, at a board meeting following... And, and did he discuss with you the attorney's advice that was given to him? That I do not recall. I actually think it was... Uh, our discussion was more, while we see the management of personnel within the department to be within the chief's purview, back to the tactical versus strategic, it was a significant event that we would have appreciated knowing about in advance. Okay. And that same, was really the extent of same our Same questions to the other two members. Did you all ever have any discussions with Chief Manger about his discussions with the attorney, DeBias? No. Okay. And so my concern is, is that policy was changed, and that may or may not have been appropriate. That's another issue, which Chief Manger got a legal counsel on. I'm not, I'm not, he's a good guy. I'm not fussing at him. My concern is, if we've done it for one, are we going to do it for others? Has such an agreement been approved for any rank-and-file officers? And I would ask this of you, Ms. Gibson. Do you have any knowledge that this was approved for rank-and-file officers? And I'm not talking about a case where... As the rule says, you can do it when you expect somebody to come back or you hope they'll come back. Maybe they've got a, a, a slight disability or a medical issue and you're hoping they're coming back. In this case, we had an employee who actually had taken another job and, and left the region, had gone to the West Coast. Do you know of any other cases where that's been done for rank and file members of the United States Capitol Police? I would say I do not have knowledge of when it's been done, period, because, again, it's a personnel management decision that the board has not been involved in for any of the officers. Have you ever taken those liberties with the Senate 
in, in under your any of the folks under your situation in the Senate? I do not have a similar program. Okay, I appreciate that. I see my time <clears throat> is up, and I yield back. Uh, very good. Uh, next up is Senator Welsh, uh, who spent a lot of time.